Welcome to St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Stillwater, Oklahoma. I'm Jerry Frank, the Director of Music here at St. Andrew's, and I'm also a Professor Emeritus of Music at Oklahoma State University. This parish was founded in 1892, so it's actually one of the uh, older uh, churches in the city of Stillwater. Um, the present building that we are in now was built in the mid-1960s. Um, so a long history for the church, not so long for this particular building. Uh, we're just a block from the OSU campus, and so it's very convenient um, to go between the church and the campus. Um, the organ that we have here was built by Roy Redman, who has a small shop in Fort Worth, Texas. And the reason that this organ is here is that the previous organ, which was a pipe organ, uh, had a little bit of an unfortunate accident when a tornado hit the church in June of 1975. Um, the entire southwest part of the church was lifted off at that point, and uh, between the wind damage and the rain that followed uh, the tornado, the old organ was ruined. Um, I have, I did not see, uh, I was not here at that time, and I've never actually seen any pictures of what um, the situation looked like at that time. But much to the credit of the people at St. Andrews, they got busy right away uh, and rebuilt what needed to be done in the church. And then they also signed a contract uh, for this particular instrument that we have. This is a mechanical action organ. We also say it's tracker action because trackers are the uh, devices that are part of the linkage from the keyboard up to where the pipes are. Um, so it's a tracker action organ. Everything in it is mechanical, whether we are pulling and pushing off stops or if we are playing on the keyboards, uh, it's all mechanical connections. The only thing that is electrical in this organ is the blower of the instrument that provides the wind. And it is situated down within this uh, organ case. So it's a, a very nicely laid out instrument and you can see that uh, it fits perfectly into this particular space. And of course, it was designed for this space. So we have here on this organ um, two manuals. We call these manuals because they're played by the hands. And then we also have a pedal division. So we would say that this organ has three divisions in it. And in the facade of the organ, as we look at it, we can see those three divisions uh, very clearly delineated. Over here, um, to my far right, are pipes that are in the pedal division of the organ. Those are the tallest pipes uh, of the organ because they have the lowest pitches. And um, so that's why this particular tower is taller than what we see otherwise in the organ. For the manuals here, we have a two-story arrangement. The great division, the bottom keyboard, the pipes are located up high behind the facade pipes. And for the top keyboard, the pipes are all contained within here uh, behind these louvers. And these louvers can be opened and closed. And that then will give us less volume this way, more volume this way. Now you see me doing this with my hands because this also is mechanical. But when playing, an organist in order to operate these is probably going to have the fingers going. So there is a swell shoe, as we call it down here, that can be operated to uh, open or close the shutters. Now I've said this is a swell shoe and the reason for the word swell is that um, using these devices permits us to swell the sound. Felix Mendelssohn was very well known in England where he had toured a number of times and on those tours, among other things, he gave organ recitals. Uh, because of his popularity, a publisher in England asked him to write three voluntaries for the organ. 
And of course that publisher knew that it was a sure sale uh, kind of situation. So what Mendelssohn gave to the uh, printer, the publisher, was actually six sonatas. And each of them varies a great deal from the others. They do not use sonata allegro form. Uh, some of the sonatas for organ are two movements, some of them are four movements. We find just a great deal of variety. I'm going to play for you the final movement of his sixth sonata. Normally we would think of the final movement as being something that's going to be pretty splashy. And in fact, the title of this movement is Finale. However, it is a slow and quiet movement. So I hope that you enjoy it. by Johann Gottfried Walter. He was a second cousin of J.S. Bach, and in fact, the two of them were very close friends. They both worked for, I believe it was eight years, in the, uh, for the Duke of Weimar as court musicians for him. So they were extremely close, and we do know that uh, when Walter's first son was born, he asked J.S. Bach to be the godfather, which happened. So we have this very close link here with uh, Walter and better known composers. And it's interesting that I use the word better known because I think that Walter is somebody who really deserves to be far better known than he is. Um, his works really are uh, for organ primarily. We don't have much of anything else that he wrote. Um, but he and Bach together did a number of things for instance, because they were in the court, um, they would have interchange with musicians from other countries. And so both Bach and Voltaire uh, transcribed some string concerti or uh, orchestral concerti for the organ and the harpsichord. And we have a number of those that are very, very fine. Voltaire was really highly recognized during his life because he compiled a dictionary uh, in the German language, in which he discussed musical terms, but also it was the first time that anyone had written biographical information about living composers. So because of him, we have a lot of that kind of material, 
and also he was a collector of music scores, which of course at that time were, would have been handwritten almost entirely. Uh, and so there are many, many works that we have, uh, of which we have knowledge and which are available to us now because Walter was the person who actually recorded them in a, a legible way so that it would live on. This is his partita on the German chorale, Jesu meine Freude. Now, several words I've used here, the word chorale, that is the German word for a hymn. So when we say it's a chorale partita, the chorale means hymn, the hymn tune is being used. Partita here refers to a set of variations. Um, and the partita as a set of variations on a chorale tune was something that was done by many, many composers at that time. We have, um, you know, the composer Johann Pachelbel. We have a number of chorale partitas from him. J.S. Bach did them, Georg Böhm, uh, other people at that time, and they are really marvelous, marvelous works of music. Jesu meine Freude, the particular chorale or hymn that this is based on, uh, is a tune that we find in a number of modern hymnals in the United States. So you may very well know this tune, um, uh, and you may know a certain text that goes with it. Uh, a very common uh, text in the original translation into English uh, from the mid-19th century is Jesus, Priceless Treasure. But Jesu meine Freude, uh, if we were literal with it, it would be Jesus, my joy. So it's a, uh, a chorale that we know is very widely used then, and it still is now. So you will hear a lot of uh, different sounds as I play different parts of this work. Um, just a little editorial comment here. I am not going to do everything uh, the way that I would do it normally if it were a more formal situation. I'm going to cut out some parts. I'm going to add some stops sometimes where I wouldn't typically add stops, but I'm doing all of this to try to cover a lot of territory so that you will uh, get to hear more sounds of the organ. So we're gonna start with principal eight foot, and then I'll add more principles to that sound, and then we're gonna be doing a lot of flute sounds after that. Eventually, we'll be on full organ.